basically the technology is safe as far as we can tell. What more, how much more study is really required? Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie for Reason TV. If you're like me, when you think about fracking, you think about the fracking song. What the frack is going on? and in documentaries like Gasland. Six states have documented over 1,000 incidents of groundwater contamination. Our water was good before they started drilling, and when they got done, it was bad. Now, when I don't know what to think about something related to the environment or to technology or to science in general, I do what I always do. I turn to Reason's longtime science correspondent, Ron Bailey. Ron, thanks for joining us. Delighted to be with you. What is fracking, and what is the controversy about? Fracking as a technology has been around for about 60 years. Basically, you're injecting into deep wells water under high pressure with sand to crack open rocks to release hydrocarbon molecules like oil and natural gas. What other chemicals are used in the fracking process? Well, there are a variety of chemicals. They're, they're used for basically corrosion resistance to prevent bacteria from fouling the equipment and the pipes and so forth. And some of them are, uh, are hazardous. You wouldn't want to drink them. They're things like benzene, for example, or formaldehyde. Critics charge that fracking uh, releases gases that then bubble up and pollute water. Is that what's going on? So far, there are no examples where this has been found. No examples anywhere at this point. That's the good news. The bad news is, is that when you dig these wells, they need to have casing, piping, in order to conduct the molecules up, the natural gas or the oil. And if you don't do it right, then what will happen is that the gas could escape and get into people's drinking water. And this has happened. But this is what will happen even with conventional wells. It has nothing to do with the technology of hydrofracturing or fracking. It has everything to do with the fact that somebody created a well incompetently. Talk a little bit about that uh, process by which gas got into people's water wells and when they turn on their faucets, they could light it on fire. Is that what's happening? That has happened in some cases. For example, famously in a little town called Dimmock, Pennsylvania, where an energy company called Cabot Energy had dug about 60 wells in a nine square mile area. And they used uh, fracking technology in order to get the, the gas out of the ground. But that wasn't the problem. The problem was is that the casings, that is the lining of the wells, were defective. And this was determined by the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. And because of these defective casings, natural gas escaped into people's well water. And that is a problem. And the companies now uh, had to pay the, the citizens whose wells have been harmed $4 million for that. A number of anti-fracking people point to the case of Sublette, Wyoming, where supposedly that's what happened. Again, it's not the technology of fracking that seems to have been the problem there. The uh, federal agencies that looked into the matter have concluded that the wells that were contaminated were contaminated essentially by trucks that brought in the substances, in this case benzene, when they were busy siphoning water out of the wells. I should also point out these wells were not drinking water wells, they were industrial wells. It's still bad that they were contaminated, but the technology or fracking did not cause it itself, but basically was mishandled surface water. Why is it becoming so controversial right now? It moved into a new area that is the East Coast, Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, and West Virginia. Because it was discovered there was something called the Marcellus Shale, a more populated area, an area uh, in rural areas where people have not had to put up with the production of oil and natural gas. They're just not used to it. So there was a it's kind of a NIMBY backlash to it. And uh, natural gas is also uh, relatively uh, clean fuel? The Department of Energy's National uh, Energy Technology Laboratory estimates that burning natural gas would produce about half the amount of greenhouse gases that burning coal does. So it really is perhaps a bridge fuel, if you will, to a lower carbon energy future. The New York State Attorney General recently filed a lawsuit claiming that federal agencies that allow fracking haven't really adequately studied the issues or the cost benefits or the particular harms of it. Is the New York uh, State Attorney General onto something here? I, I don't believe that he is, actually. We've been doing 100,000 of these wells a year for many, many years. The technology has been around for 60 years. Basically, the technology is safe, as far as we can tell. What more, how much more study is really required? What's the great potential of fracking? I mean, can we be doing, well, should we be doing more of it? And what's, what's the potential payoff versus the potential risks that we've talked about? The potential payoffs are enormous uh, to fracking. Basically, the natural gas supply for the United States will last 100 years at current usages. We could move in the direction of reducing greenhouse gases very cheaply using this technology to, to produce electricity. 
it's a great benefit indeed. Another thing that's happening is the technology is now being used, just now being adapted to oil production. And it is possible, there are new estimates out there, using that technology, we could essentially produce three million new barrels of oil a day by 2020. That's the size of the production of Kuwait. And that would be all onshore, would not be in the Gulf, and it would be a huge benefit to the economy again in those ways. Ron Bailey, I want to thank you for talking to Reason TV today about fracking and its discontents. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.